trauma and chronic pain, and how the two are interlinked. Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. I have a serious topic to discuss with you all today, and we're gonna talk about trauma. What trauma actually is, what a trauma response in our nervous system looks like, how certain events can trigger trauma, and overall, how trauma can trigger and perpetuate chronic pain and symptoms. And I wanna finish off by giving a message of hope that by actually processing your trauma and renegotiating it, we can heal from chronic pain and symptoms. Now, before we dive into this video, I want to put a disclaimer that discussing trauma is really hard. It's a difficult thing. So even right now, it's just taking a few deep breaths, just slowing it down. And it's just checking in with your body to see if it's accessible today for you to watch this video. I'm really honoring that. You don't want to push through and overwhelm your nervous system more. So when we talk about trauma, there's lots of definitions. There's lots of definitions out there. I like Peter Levine's, where he talks about how trauma is not the event. It's a response in the nervous system. So trauma in and of itself is the response in the nervous system. It's not a set event. And this makes a lot of sense because one event could cause someone to have a trauma response in their nervous system. And that same event could cause someone to be completely okay. And so it's the response that we're having internally that in and of itself is the trauma. And we need to start thinking about it like this because what happens is pop culture, our society in general, will validate that certain events are triggering a, a trauma response. A certain event is traumatic, but that's not how it works. Sometimes really small events can trigger a trauma response for us because of the way we perceive them, because of where our nervous system was already at. And I want people to honor that. So when we talk about trauma, it's an overactivation of the sympathetic system, or the dorsal, <clears throat> sorry, I have a cough. It's an overactivation of the sympathetic system or the dorsal vagal system. That's what a trauma response is. And it's important to know that from a polyvagal somatic lens, this is what trauma is. And so when we talk about an overactivation of the sympathetic system, it can have certain physical symptoms like rapid heart rate, rapid breathing, inability to sleep, chronic tension, pain, and tingliness. And then we also have mental symptoms of an overactivated sympathetic system, such as racing thoughts, obsessive thinking, irritation, nervousness, panic, or rage. And this is what an overactivation of your sympathetic system looks like. Now, when we talk about an overactivation of the dorsal vagal system, some of the physical symptoms are poor muscle tone, poor immune function, things like chronic fatigue, chronic pain. We also have low energy or, um, you know, things like exhaustion. This is the physical symptoms of your dorsal vagal system. Now, the mental symptoms are things like dissociation, depression numbness, uh, lack of responsiveness in relationships, or overall lack of responsiveness. So I'm trying to paint a bit of a picture of what an overactivation of the sympathetic system can look like and the dorsal vagal system. And for some people, when they have an overwhelming event, their trauma response is an overactivation of the sympathetic system. And for others, it's more the dorsal vagal system. And sometimes people will oscillate. For myself, you know, I experienced bullying growing up, quite a bit of it, and it caused a trauma response in my nervous system. And I would oscillate. I would go between a high sympathetic system 
and then completely shutting down. So understanding how your nervous system is responding and how trauma presents for you can be really important because it gives us a sense of what we need to do to heal. And so when we talk about chronic pain and symptoms, the thing that triggers and perpetuates chronic pain and symptoms is when your nervous system is stuck in this high sympathetic system or it's completely shut down in that dorsal vagal system. That's what's going to trigger and perpetuate your symptoms. And this is why, you know, the research is showing that if you've experienced trauma or you've experienced childhood adversity, you're much more likely to get fibromyalgia, widespread chronic pain, migraines, headaches, things like chronic fatigue. And so we know this. Now, the unfortunate part is, you know, our medical system, our society is very medicalized. And so we keep trying to hammer away at treating our symptoms in a medical way when our nervous system is trying to protect us. See, what trauma does is it causes us to constantly be in survival mode, fight, flight, freeze, or shut down. We're constantly in this defense state. And when we're there, your nervous system is trying to protect you and warn you by sending you chronic pain and chronic symptoms. When we talk about trauma, I like a lot of Deb Dana stuff. And one of our quotes is that trauma replaces patterns of connection with patterns of protection. Because our nervous system, what it wants to do, given the right environment, is that it wants to socially engage. It wants to connect. It wants to reach out to others, to the world, and feel this connection and safety. But trauma takes that away from us. And we end up into this protective state, which causes us to have chronic pain and symptoms. So when we talk about events that trigger trauma, you know, I made... I discuss this a bit with people. I don't like to be too solid on this because there are certain events that often will trigger a trauma response, but I know this can be really individual for people. So even as I discuss this, if it's not on the list, what caused you to have a trauma response, I'm not invalidating your experience. Your experience is valid. Your nervous system doesn't lie in terms of this. But these are just some common things. So it could be things like I talked about, like bullying, it could be a life-threatening event, toxic relationships, things like physical, emotional, or sexual abuse in childhood or adulthood. And there's other childhood adversity that we face that can result in a trauma response. Even things like financial concerns in the family, feeling unsafe with a family member, Having a family member have a mental health concern or addictions concern. Things like, you know, a medical procedure in childhood or in adulthood for that nature. Um, and so these are all these types of childhood adversities that people can face. Now, when we talk about chronic pain and symptoms, lots of people get medical trauma. The medical system can stigmatize us. We can have procedures that our nervous system has a trauma response to. And in and of themselves, I think chronic pain and chronic symptoms can be very traumatic for people, myself included. When you start to begin experiencing symptoms, you can't figure out what's causing them. You begin to feel hopeless and helpless. The medical system might stigmatize you even more. And then as a result, we start to have this overactivation of our sympathetic system or our dorsal vagal system just because of our chronic pain and symptoms. And so I really believe that they can cause our trauma response for people. And we need to work through that and process that with love and care and compassion so that we can move through this. So these are just some events that can potentially trigger that trauma response. But it's useful to think about, do I have trauma? And again, don't go into this if it's not accessible for you today, but it can be helpful to analyze that. Go down to, you know, through your life and go through certain events and look at, did you have a defense response that was prolonged? Fight, flight, freeze, or shut down? Did you respond in this way? And I think it's also important to kind of correlate the my chronic pain and symptoms develop around these time periods when that was taking place. 
that's really beneficial to do as well. And I want to leave a message of hope here that we can renegotiate trauma. We talk about renegotiation of trauma in terms of somatic experiencing. Peter Levine talks about this because trauma causes this disorganization and breakdown of our system. But we can work to what's called towards what's called homeostasis. I like the term homeostasis, sciency. And it's an equilibrium of the interconnected parts. I looked up the, the dictionary definition, that's what it stated. And it's an equilibrium of the system with systems within our nervous system, of the dorsal vagal system, the shutdown, of the sympathetic system, the mobilized response, and of the ventral vagal system, which was when we feel safe and connected. And so we can integrate that. We can achieve homeostasis. If we're able to bring in ventral vagal, safe and connected energy into our system and be there more often, and then we can have the non-defense responses of the dorsal vagal and the sympathetic system, equilibrium, homeostasis can be achieved. Now, I just said a lot of fancy words. When I talk about non-defense responses, I want to be clear, all sympathetic and dorsal vagal energy isn't negative. It's, you know, there, there is a positive response to these. You know, our sympathetic system, it causes our heart rate to regulate. It causes our breathing to regulate. And it also regulates our body temperature. The dorsal vagal system, it regulates our digestive system. And so when we achieve homeostasis, we slowly do this, and this happens over time when we're processing trauma, we get to a place where we can attend to the high energy of the sympathetic system and the lower energy of the dorsal vagal system. And we can bring in that ventral vagal safe and connected energy. And by doing that, we're able to attend to and have high energy and low energy and still feel safe and connected to the present, to the here and now. And that's how homeostasis is achieved. Now, there's lots of ways to process trauma. You know, in this video, I talked about polyvagal and somatic experiencing. I have other models that I use to process trauma too, but I always recommend people find a good therapist that they feel connected to and that whose approach matches what you're looking for. Because the renegotiation of trauma is possible. And by doing that, our chronic pain and symptoms can reduce or become eliminated. I believe that by processing your trauma, you can heal your chronic pain and symptoms. So I hope this video is helpful. Please put your questions or comments down below, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And I'll talk to you all next time. Happy healing.